Hello and welcome to another ASMR chemistry video. I'm Professor Karen Holman and I'm here to teach you a little bit about chemistry in a soothing, relaxing manner with my trusty fountain pens and my 24 years experience teaching chemistry. So please join me and either relax or prepare to learn or maybe a little bit of both. Let's get going. So many general chemistry textbooks are really similar. It's, it's funny. The chapters start out the same. They have the same kinds of things in them. But they're all trying to be unique. I guess... It's kind of like uh, when you get a cola, a soda that's cola, they're, they're all kind of the same, but uh, they're all kind of a little bit different too. So as you go through the beginning of many of them, they introduce the different states of matter and describing different things like atoms and molecules as just an introduction without the details of how they bond together to make the molecules or anything, but just just to give an introduction. All the different types of matter, mixtures or pure compounds, those are often in there too. But one thing noticed is that at the beginning there's something that's pretty important. I'm going to point this out here. This is units of measurement. And in chemistry, as we do with many sciences, we use the metric system exclusively which, for those of us in the United States, is a little different than what we're used to. But for the rest of the world, it probably feels very normal, which is great. I do wish the United States would switch over. Oh, funny, I had just mentioned cola and shows this here. Um, I did not realize that. Maybe it was subliminal. I saw it earlier or something. So I wanted to bring this up. I'm going to bring this over here for a minute, and then we're going to go through some examples. And so this is where we're looking at the base units that are used. This would be not just for chemistry, also for physics and other sciences, for mass, we use kilogram, length, meter, time, second, temperature, Kelvin. The amount of a substance is a mole. Electric current, which we don't use a lot in chemistry, but we do when we talk about electrochemistry. That's the ampere. Luminous intensity. Very rarely do we use that in chemistry. But there it is, the candela. And so what is very useful for us is to be able to use various prefixes because in chemistry and other sciences, sometimes it is very useful to use these because we do have amounts that are very large. Such is the case when you have a giga of anything. It is 10 to the ninth. So that means that one gigameter is, in scientific notation, one times 10 to the ninth power of a meter. So in other words, you would need one billion meters to make a gigameter. This 
is something that those of us who use computers, we're pretty used to giga now. Gigabytes. That's a billion bytes. It's <laughs> a lot of bytes. We also have mega, which is a million. And notice that's capital, because all the way down here with milla, milla is lowercase. And that is 10 to the minus third. So now we're getting to fractions of that base unit of a meter. So this is one thousandth of a meter. Very tiny. And we go all the way down at this list down to femto, which is 10 to the minus 15th. We don't use femto too much in chemistry. Once in a while you see it but we definitely see pico and nano a lot, as well as micro and milla. So all of these are very useful to know. And while it's not always necessary to memorize things, it is good to know these well because they come up so often. So let's do some examples. As if you are given a value that's in one unit and you want to convert to another unit, that is very useful to be able to do. So let's do it. Time to get my paper and my favorite. These are fountain pens that I just adore, especially for this channel. It's so much fun. Okay. So let's imagine that we are going to convert From, let's say we know something is 1.0 gigagrams. 1.0 gigagrams. We are going to convert to nanograms. Okay, so this is where we're starting gigagrams. To nanograms. Okay. So part of this is we need to remember what giga is and what nano is. Okay. And as we just said, giga means that it is 10 to the ninth of that base unit. In this case, it's grams. Nano, on the other hand, is 10 to the minus 9th grams. So we can use that information to do our conversion. Okay, so let's start out with what we know. Okay, so we know that it is 1.0 gigagrams. And then what I like to do is make a conversion that's in a ratio of something we know that is equal. And what we just stated over here is that a gigagram is equal to 10 to the ninth grams. So we can make a ratio where we make sure that giga will cancel out and will give us grams. So there are 10 to the ninth grams in one gigagram. Okay, let's see what that equals. So if we take 1 times 10 to the 9th, that gives us 1 times 10 to the 9th. But what are the units? Well, we had gigagrams, but that cancels out with the gigagrams in the denominator here. So 
so cancel, cancel. That leaves grams. Are we in nanograms yet? No, we are not. So, we can convert now to nanograms. Let's do it. So now we're starting with 1 times 10 to the 9th grams. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a ratio of how many nanograms are in a gram. In this case, I wrote that it was 10 to the minus grams are in one nanogram. And it, it sounds kind of funny to say it's that many in one of these, that's something smaller. But what this is saying is that a gram is one billionth the size of a nanogram. So, if we put and to the minus ninth grams. This is the unit we want to cancel out in the nanogram. And now grams will cancel. And we take 1.0 times 10 to the ninth. We divide by 10 to the minus ninth. And if you need a calculator, if you don't remember your rules of dividing exponents, that is totally fine. That's what calculators are for. We get 10 to the 18th nanograms. So, final answer. Converting from a gigagram to a nanogram. There are 1 times 10 to the 18th nanograms in 1 gigagram. All right. Shall we go the other direction? How about let's take something that's smaller and convert it to a unit that is larger. And let's use more significant figures this time. All right, now. Let us convert. How about two, three, four, three, oh, point five micrometers? So that's a mu micro micrometers. And let's convert this to kilometers, or kilometers. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, instead of doing this in two steps like we did here, I'm going to show you how I usually do it is all in a row. So let's put our number here that we start with. with our units, micrometers. So, first we do our conversion. Again, I like to always convert first to the base unit, because then I know I'm doing it correctly. And we either look it up, or we remember that there are 10 to the 6th micrometers in a meter. Then, we can immediately make another ratio where we acknowledge that there are 10 to the third meters in a kilometer. Then, we can divide by each of these. And Put this into your calculator, and I'm going to write out the final answer in scientific notation, which always has one value followed by the decimal point, and however many significant figures there are past the decimal point. So we get 2.3 4 3 0 
zero, five times ten to the minus five kilometers. All right. So, can I show you one other way that you can do this? It gives the exact same value, the exact same result as it should, but it is also correct. So if we start over with our number in the units of micrometers, also called microns for short sometimes, you can actually say that the ratio between a micrometer and a meter is 10 to the minus 6 meters per micrometer. This is saying the same thing as this. Here you are dividing by 10 to the 6th. Here you are multiplying by 10 to the minus 6th. It's the same kind of ratio, you're just looking at it from a different point of view. How many meters in a micrometer? Here how many micrometers in a meter? We can do the same with kilometers and meters where we can say there are 10 to the minus third kilometers in a meter. You will get the exact same So there you have it, unit conversions, units that are used often in chemistry and other sciences as well. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this, if you find this to be helpful. I would so much appreciate it. It helps this channel grow. I've been doing this for almost four years now. And I want to continue doing it and creating chemistry videos for all of you to help you. I want you to do well in your homeworks and your exams, or maybe you're just a chemistry enthusiast. You want to learn a little bit more, or maybe, just maybe, you find this to lull you to sleep. And that is wonderful as well. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.